Welcome, welcome to worship on this first Sunday in a season of creation. I'm Pastor Christy Weber, and I'm one of the pastors in the partnership of Christians in Action. And starting today, all eight of our congregations, plus Emmanuel, are going to uh, have a four-week season of creation. So it's focusing on God as creator. And each, you'll, there'll be four different themes through this season, and the theme I have this morning is humanity. So you'll see your bulletin has um, a lot in it that might seem new. We were having a little conversation about how it's such a long bulletin. We really only have 60 minutes. Please keep it to that length, Pastor. Um, but I get to be the one who teaches some of the pieces that will happen each week. So there's some new things, but by the time you get to week three, you're going to be saying, oh, I totally know that. So if I could invite you to look at hymn number 739 in your hymnals, 739. This is one that will come up at least twice, if not um, four times during the series. 739 touch the earth lightly and I'm going to ask Tanya to play through the whole song and then I'll sing a phrase and you'll repeat it back to me so that you can get a sense of how this song that we'll sing during communion um, goes. of two parts that repeat each repeat themselves so we'll sing just that first phrase touch the earth lightly use the earth whoops yep we agreed i was going to do just that little part and then you'd repeat touch the earth lightly everyone touch the earth lightly second part use the earth gently use the earth gently then we'll do a whole phrase nourish the life of the world in our care nourish the life of the world in our care and cut it back to the beginning gift of great wonder gift of great wonder ours to surrender to surrender trust for the children tomorrow will bear trust for the children tomorrow will bear so when we get to communion you'll hear it played and then we'll sing it all together and hopefully by verse three you'll be very feeling very confident and by the next time you hear it, you'll say, oh, I love that song, even though the notes are a little different. Um, then if you could turn to 837. This is Many and Great, O God, Are Your Works. It's actually a Dakota tune. And several years ago, I had asked some ninth graders to help pick music for worship. And they really liked that this had roots in our Dakota area. It's a Native American tune from the Dakota people. And this song is the first verse, is the first hymn, and the last verse is the last hymn every week. So it is definitely worth learning because you're going to know it really well. So we'll sing just the first uh, line and a half, and then you repeat. Many and great, O oh God, are your works, maker of earth and sky. Let's try that together. Many and great, O oh God, are your works, maker of earth and sky. Now listen to 
listen to this one. Your hands have set the heavens with stars. Just do that part. Your hands have set the heavens with stars. And then the next phrase. Your fingers spread the mountains and plains. Your fingers spread the mountains and plains. And this music's like the beginning. Lo, at your word, the waters were formed. Deep seas obey your voice. Lo, at your word, the waters were formed. Deep seas obey your voice. So just keep that page open because we'll come back to that in just a minute. There are a number of announcements in your um, bulletin. And what's not in the bulletin but is worth um, passing along is that uh, the women of the ELCA group continues to collect items for baby care kits and school supplies and personal care kits. So if you are still collecting those, you can still bring those to atonement. And you'll hear more about that in October. And there is, of course, coffee fellowship after the service and you're all welcome to stay for that so i would invite you at this point to rise in body or spirit as we sing the first verse only of 837 many and great O god to turn in your bulletin to the litany that is listed there. In the name of the Creator who creates all peoples, in the name of Christ who gives new life to all peoples, in the name of the Spirit, the same breath in all peoples. Amen. Holy, 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 earth is filled with God's presence. The Creator of life be with you. Jesus, we gather in your name to worship in this sanctuary called Earth, a planet filled with your presence, quivering in the forests, vibrating in the land, pulsating in the wilderness, shimmering in the rivers. Spirit, reveal yourself to us in this place and show us your face in all creation. Peoples from every corner of creation, celebrate with all creature young and old across the planet, native people of every land, people of every color in every place, celebrate with us the diversity of creation, all humanity on planet Earth. Sing, peoples, sing. Sing, creation, sing. I invite you to name the countries from where your ancestors came to join us in worship. So my relatives are from Poland and Sweden. Mm-hmm. We celebrate the song of the planet. Each week, there will be a symbol of remembrance, and some people will be bringing the symbol. You actually brought your symbol for today with you. If you could hold out your left hand, and then put your right hand in your left hand, and take a look at it, turn it over, back and forth. Do you remember a time when your hand was smaller? 
Perhaps you remember a time when your hand was smoother. Or um, do you remember a time when your hand has touched someone? Or has worked with someone whose hand looks different than yours? We'll follow along in the confession and absolution, holding on to your hand. As we rub this symbol in our hands, we remember that we are all human beings created by one God. We remember and confess that we were created in God's image to serve and sustain our planet. Christ, the true image of God, hear our cry. We regret that we have forgotten that Earth is our home and have treated this garden planet as a beast to be tamed and a place to be ruled. We have treated our fellow human beings shamelessly, abusing some because of ethnic differences and alienating others because of differing backgrounds. As human beings, we have dominated nature, killed our animal kin without concern, and plundered our planet with abandon. Christ hears your confession and forgives your sins against humanity. Christ, Christ teach us to love all you can as your children and all creatures of earth as our In the name of Jesus, I invite you to come home to earth as one by rejoicing with all creation. Shalom, shalom. We are coming home. As we come home to earth, Christ have mercy. As we seek to love our home, Christ have mercy. As we seek to care for our planet, Christ have mercy. The Gloria will be sung every week, and so I get to teach this also. The nice part about this is the first line is repeated in the second line, and the third line is repeated in the fourth line. So listen to the whole thing once, and then I'll sing it, and you can sing the phrase back. we talked about before. I'll sing the first line, you sing the second line back to me. I'll sing the third line, you sing the fourth line back to me, and then we'll sing it all together all the way through. Gloria, 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 glory to God on high. Gloria, 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 glory to together. Gloria, 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 glory to God on high. Gloria, 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 glory to God on high. And on earth, peace to God's people. Thank you. Please pray with me. God, our creator, as we reflect on the ways that humans have sought to dominate creation, help us to hear the cries of creatures. Fill us with your risen power. Help us to serve and preserve our planet home and to celebrate life 
with people from all lands and all nations. In the name of Christ, the risen servant, who is the true image of God among us. Amen. I invite you to be seated. The first reading is from Genesis chapters 1 and 2. To rule or to serve the earth, does creation in the image of God mean domination of all creation? Or does the reading from Genesis 2 interpret the first text to mean serve earth? From chapter 1, then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And then from chapter two, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. This is the word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 8 responsively. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. All sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading is from Philippians chapter 2. When Christ became human, the message of Paul is that when Christ became human, it meant emptying himself of divine power and dominion and becoming a servant, a slave. I start reading at the first verse. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is the word of the Lord. This time I invite our third grader and his mom and dad to come forward. Thank you. 
Destiny, I'm gonna give this to you and I want you to hang on to that until I tell you to give it to him. <laughs> Today we celebrate another milestone in the life of this community of faith. Third grader, when your parents brought you forward for baptism, they promised to place in your hands the Holy Scriptures, to take you to the services of God's house and teach you the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Ten Commandments. They also promised to nurture your faith, life in faith, hope, and love. On that same day, this or another community of faith promised to help your parents and your home to fulfill that promise. Today, we join together in taking another step in your life of faith. Now, this is a special time for you, Colin. Reading has and will become part of your daily life. You're getting old enough to read the Bible, to talk about it with parents, friends, teachers, and other caring adults here at church and at your house, and learn from this Bible what it means to live as a child of God. Now, the Bible that your parents are about to present you are a gift from the church. These Bibles are meant to be read, marked up, and used. Use them in your home. Bring them with you to your Sunday school class every week. Continue to explore and study them. Remember that these words are written for, to you. Parents, if you would hand Cowan his Bible and repeat after me. State your child's name. Cowan. You are a joy and a wonder. You are a joy and a wonder. A precious gift from God to me. A precious gift from God to me. Receive this Bible. Receive this Bible. Knowing that it is a precious love letter. Knowing that it is a precious love letter. From God to you. From God to you. May you always be blessed. May you always be blessed. By reading and exploring it in our home. By reading and exploring it in our home. Congregation, please repeat after me. May God bless you now. May God bless you now. And always, and always, as you receive this precious love letter from God, as you receive this precious love letter from God, may you always be surrounded, may you always be surrounded by the love and prayers of all of us, by the love and prayers of all of us, as you grow, as you grow, and continue to be nurtured in your faith, and continue to be nurtured in your faith. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word is a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path. Bless this Bible, Cowan in his home. Speak your word to him so that he may know the promise of your love. Trust the goodness of your grace. Follow the way that leads from darkness into light and live as your children now and forever through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give Cowan a round of applause. And if there are any children that would like to come forward for a quick little children's sermon, come on up. <laughs> Have you guys ever made a wish? Have you ever wished for something? Have you ever wished for something? Maybe you wanted something at Christmas or at your birthday. You know, there's this thing called a wishbone. Have you ever seen a wishbone? You've heard of it. So they take, right, they take a wishbone and they tear it apart. And whoever gets the biggest part gets to make the wish. In our text today, James and John want to sit by Jesus' side, but I don't think that's the kind of wish he wants to make. They don't want to become like a servant. What do you think a servant is? What do servants do? What do servants do, Colin? They are uh, the Yeah, they kind of, do they help the king and queen and they like do stuff for them? Well, in our text, God calls us to be servants. Do you think we can help other people? Can we help other people? Yeah, we can, can't we? Can you guys pray with me? Good and gracious God, help us to be servants in your world, 
to be your hands and feet and to help those in need. In your name we pray. Actually, I'll, I'll invite you all to rise for the gospel. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus called his disciples and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now you get to sit down again. <laughs> In the Apostles' Creed, we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. It's the shortest part of the Apostles' Creed, but God as creator is still an equal part of the Trinity. So in this season of creation, we're taking that one little phrase, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and we're expanding it to pay attention to God as creator. Usually in Lutheran congregations, we have assigned readings for the day, something from the Old Testament, something from the Psalm, perhaps, something from the New Testament, and a gospel reading. And then it's the job of the preachers to, and the congregation to figure out, all right, this was the reading. What's the topic that it's about? But for the next four weeks, we're kind of flipping that on its head. We have the topic season of creation, and my theme is humanity. And then we figure out what are the readings that help us understand what God says about humanity. I and the other preachers in this mix didn't actually go picking the readings. Someone else had done that for us, which was very helpful. But if you listen over the next four weeks, the question will be, what does God say about earth? What does God say about sky? What does God say about mountain? And today, what does God say about humanity? And humanity is part of creation. I think that was kind of the first thing that I had to wrestle with was I often will think about creation, earth and sky and mountain, and, but to remember that people are a part of creation too. And I find that in the readings that we heard from Genesis and Psalm 8. Genesis lifts up that God created humankind in God's image. We are not God. We are not really even like God, but we can see in ourselves and in one another a reflection, the image of God. And Psalm 8 lifts up that God created the heavens, the moon, and the stars everything that is so vast and expansive. And the psalmist says, what, is, what are humans that you would be mindful of them? The God who created everything in the expanses beyond our imagination would also care for you and care for me. What are humans that God is mindful of us. We're an intentional part of creation. We're self-reflective. We can think about our own responsibility to care for all that God has created. And part of the Genesis reading was that the, the human gave a name to every living creature. So here's this, this creature that comes along, and it's named Dog. And that was its name. In English, 
we call that animal a dog. In Swedish, it's called a hund. Any other words that you know for dog from other languages? Hundel. Hundel. Okay. This is like scratching the language learning part of your brain. Okay. Or how about cow? Again, in Swedish, it's ku. Anybody got a word for cow? Cow. <laughs> okay. It gets more complicated when you start to think of all the different words throughout the world for something like dog or cow. Yeah. Do you have your bulletin in front of you? You can take a look at the front cover. There's a picture on the front cover. Oh, isn't that handy? It's even on the screen. Night. Way to go, Doreen. You did not know I was going to do this, but nice job. So it's a picture of a face, but it's a composite picture of a face. You can look at the eyes and recognize that there are different colors of eyes, different shapes of eyes. You can look at the nose. Yep, there's different sizes of noses, different shapes to noses. Multiple skin tones reflected. It's a face, and yet it's a combination of faces. And each of those faces put together is fully human. Earlier in the service, we looked at our hands. Look at our hands, you can touch our hands and ask the question, is a hand without a finger still a hand? When I was growing up in the church I went to in Illinois, one of the girls in my Sunday school class was named Krista. Krista was born without any hands. Didn't stop her. She would sit in her chair and she would use her feet to hold a pencil and she could write beautifully and express herself in writing using a pencil held by her feet. As she got older, she learned to drive a car. It was a car that was, um, had some adaptations so that she could, could uh, drive, but she could get around with her car. And her job in life was really a calling to be a disability rights advocate, and to speak up, be a voice of caring for all people, regardless of the limitations that they face in life. Krista was fully human, even though hands were not part of her daily life. In this season of creation, there's each week, a litany and a confession. And they're not the words that you are maybe accustomed to hearing every week, but they are words that perhaps jar you a little bit, make you think about things a little differently. They lift up where we have failed or caused harm to the land and the water, to creation, and to other people. And it's not usually very hard for us to find examples of ways we've harmed other people. But then we hear a word of forgiveness, that God's way of being with people who harm one another is to seek a way to restore things, to find a way to make things right in the world. God sends Jesus as a way to make things right with the world. To look for a different way to relate to the world. In some of the readings today, you'll hear the word kin. Kin as our relatives, our common ancestry. Not just the places that we have come from or our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and beyond have come from, but also as we're related to all of creation our kin in creation. 
The readings from Philippians and Mark continue to call out how does God relate to humanity. Let the same mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus, who was obedient even to death on a cross. And then there's James and John. Deacon Tara talked about them. They were having a request of Jesus. Help us to have places of honor when you come into your glory. And that made the other disciples upset. Kind of, why are you more deserving than us to have this place of honor in Jesus' glory? And Jesus responds to them, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Jesus gave his life, died on the cross, as a ransom for many, as a way to make things restored in the world, to make things right once again. In Christ, we're called to a different way of life. Perhaps you have been seeing and hearing about the wildfires in Lahaina, Hawaii, or floods in Libya, or earthquake in Morocco those extreme situations. I was, I was reading one of the articles uh, from Hawaii, and one of the people being interviewed said, aloha is what we are seeing. It's a way of being in life. And aloha for her meant that because her house did not burn, but those of friends and neighbors had, at one point, she had 16 people taking shelter in her home, and she knew that other neighbors were doing the same thing. That was aloha. And she said, aloha is the person who just lost everything finding their slippers and putting their slippers on and going to help someone else without expecting anything else in return. It's aloha. We might not call it that in Jamestown, but you've seen this in our own community, in times of tragedy or crisis, or when, when people know that someone has a need, we step in and help them. It's a different way of being. Instead of finding ways to harm one another, we step in and find ways to help one another. In the readings for this whole season, one that also fits, but is, you're not going to hear it read, is from Colossians chapter 1, where it speaks of Jesus being the image of God, the firstborn of all creation. That in Christ, Christ reconciles to himself all things, making peace through the blood of the cross. Christ brings all things together in heaven and on earth, making peace through the blood of the cross. We are one in Christ. We are kin, related to one another. Christ makes all things new. New relationships, new ways of treating one another, and calls us to new life in the risen Christ. Amen. I invite you to turn in your bulletins to a tune that perhaps is familiar with words that call us to listen anew. Please rise.
for our creed this morning and each week of this season of creation, it will be a different set of words than what we're accustomed to saying. As you hear this creed week after week, it is, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But it's a new way of expanding that creed. And some of you are going to say, that's really meaningful. And some of you are going to say, I really like the regular one, please. <laughs> but I invite you to approach this in a way of expanding what it means to believe in God, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in creator, father, mother, spirit, who called the world and all that is in it into being, who spoke the creative forming word and all came forth, who created women and men and set them free to live in love, in obedience to the will of supreme love and in community with all. We believe in creator, son and brother, who because of love beyond our understanding, love for creation, entered the world to share our humanity, to rejoice and to despair, to set before us the paths of life and death and walk them with us, to be rejected and die, but finally to conquer death and bind the world to himself for all time. We believe in creator, indwelling spirit, who invites us into community that we may through faith and that community of oneness experience uplifting and sustaining grace that we may fulfill our human responsibility to reach out to our neighbor, whoever that may be, that we may rejoice in the constant nature of creation and the wondrous joy of life itself. We believe in Creator, whose word teaches us that all things grow together, the circle of life, that the paths of life and death, good and evil, too often come together, that choices are not clearly defined, but that we confidently and responsibly tread the path we choose, and only the true one can be our judge. We believe in Creator, who is present and working in this world through all creation. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We pray for the church, bless the missions and ministries of diverse congregations, that they uplift the good news of salvation in ways that can be understood. God of mercy, we pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and healing to rivers overflowing their banks or clogged with pollution. Enrich the soil for trees and plants. Provide a safe harvest of the crops needed to feed those who hunger. God of mercy. We pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind, for those strained financially, for all living with chronic pain, mental illness, the disease of addiction, or otherwise afraid or in harm's way. Protect all who cry out for mercy, especially Samantha, Sylvia, Carol, Al, Shirley, and Jeanette, and all those we name in our hearts. God of mercy, We pray for this congregation and for our partnership in Christians in Action. Open our hearts to practice intentional invitation. Help us to forgive each other, practice patience, and choose ways that bring new life. Move us to care for those in our community seeking refuge and safety. God of mercy. We give thanks for the saints who have died in faith. Show us how to live faithfully, creatively, and lovingly in your church and world. We remember especially Lorraine Vogt and Jim Lundy and all those dear to our hearts. God of mercy. Yeah. Do you have the next set of words printed? There, yes. God, our creator as we reflect on the ways that humans have sought to dominate creation, 
Help us to hear the cries of all creatures. Fill us with your risen power. Help us to serve and preserve our planet home and to celebrate life with people from all lands and nations. In the name of Christ, the risen servant, who is the true image of God among us. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. It appears to me that the offering plate is in the back, and at this point we just bring the offering plates forward. Am I following along correctly? I bet you to join in singing. It's 734. Tanya will play the whole thing once, and then we'll sing verse 3. God whose farm is all creation. God, our creator, through your love, you have given us these gifts to share. Accept our offerings as an expression of our deep thanks and as signs of our concern for those in need, including our fellow creatures on planet Earth. The creator be with you and all creation. Open your hearts. Let us give thanks to the maker of heaven and earth. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, Holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church without end. Amen. Gathered into one is the Holy Spirit, 
Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all things are now ready. Come to the table with all your kin, and share with all in need. The gift of healing for those in pain, the gift of forgiveness for all in sin, the gift of assurance for those in doubt, the gift of hope for those in tears. May we who share these gifts share Christ with one another and all our kin. I invite you to come forward for communion as you are accustomed to doing here. And for those participating on the live stream at this time, receive the body and blood of Christ, trusting in faith that Christ is with you.
to, to turn in your hymnals to number 739, Touch the Earth Lightly. We'll sing together as we rise. For this meal. We thank you, Christ, for the meal we have celebrated with you, and we pray that through your body and blood we may be healed and become agents of healing for earth. Amen. Christ calls you to be his disciples, to serve him with love and compassion, to serve earth by caring for creation, so that we, all peoples, and our kin may live. We will follow our servant Lord listening for cries of injustice from earth and groaning with creation. We will follow our risen Christ to become partners in healing our planet. We will care for creation, loving our kin, and celebrating life. Now may the penetrating power of Christ's body and blood reach deep into your heart, your mind, and your body to heal your wounds and through you to bring healing to earth. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to join in singing many and great verse 2, number 837. Christ and loving earth. 